Kia ora. Uh, in this short video we're going to have a look at how to import releases, uh, albums, singles, vinyl, cassette in this case from Discogs into the Music Brains database. Uh, so to do this, firstly we're going to have to install a user script. That's what's going to make this so quick. Um, so what we're going to do for that is we're going to search we're going to run a search for music brains user scripts. I've already typed it in, so it's popping it, it's suggesting it. And then here we go, guide slash user scripts. That's what we want from our web search. So I'm going to click on that. And now this is a really useful page, which has all of our user scripts in it, user script managers. Um, and what we're after here right at the top actually, luckily, is import Discogs releases to music brains. Now this is assuming for this to work you've already installed a user script manager to install this user script. Uh, and that only takes a second. You can follow the steps, the instructions here, just click on one of these or search for the other video on how to do that. But I've already followed those steps. I've, uh, I've installed, um, in this case, Tampa Monkey for Chrome. Now I'm going to go down to Import Discogs Releases to Music Brains by Murdos. I'm just going to click this green download button. Here we go. And now we can see uh, this just runs on Discogs, include discogs.com. And I can, uh, so we know it's safe, I can click install. Now, looks like nothing's happened, but it's installed, which is great. And we can test it out by uh, re reloading the release page here. And now look, this up here, this is new. Uh, this important to Music Brains search and Music Brains button uh, is new. Now this won't work if you're in the master here. There's no button. It's because just like Music Brains, Discogs has different versions of the same release. And we always want to pick a specific version to import. So I'm, I want to import the cassette. Um, so I'm going to click on import into music brains here. You can see the data that's getting submitted. Now this is called seeding. It's called seeding. So what it's doing is it's pre-filling all these fields and the track list based on the uh, based on the discogs data. So this saves us a lot of time. Now we do want to check that this really isn't already in the database. You want to check the spelling and all that, multiple spelling, no bridge behind. So this one actually is, we can see we've already got no bridge behind by the same artist. It's already in here. So let's just double check what's happening there. I'll open this in a new tab and close that user scripts window. Uh, here we go, no bridge behind, eight tracks, eight tracks. Okay, and we can see that it is indeed the same release but it's a digital media, the digital media version. So that's perfect. So we do want to use the same release group. Uh, we want to uh, group these two versions uh, into the same album group. Perfect. So there's a few things to fill in here. We're going to fill in our status. Um, it's official uh, because this label, well, it doesn't say bootleg here, which it often does on Discogs. But also uh, this label, it's not a bootleg label, it's a legitimate label. Um, so we're going to set it to official. The language is, uh, it's English. What we do, the language, we look at the language of the track list. Nothing to do with lyrics, nothing like that. It's just what the track list is written in, which is language, uh, English, and the script is Latin. So uh, Latin script is our alphabet. Uh, that that we use in English speaking countries um, and a lot of Europe, uh, A, B, C, D, so on. So this is Latin. The release date has all and country has been pre filled. Uh, and so is the label here. So we're just going to search. Here we go. So luckily, this label is already in Music Brains. So we can click it. Um, again, it's worth just double checking that it's the right one. Okay, this is definitely the right label because we can see here. The catalog numbers are all IH uh, and then three numbers. It's pretty distinctive. And that's what we've got here as well, IH 170. 
Now, barcode and packaging. Again, Discogs doesn't have uh, this information. Well, barcode it often does. And we don't actually know if this has a barcode. Because Discogs doesn't have, uh, have a way of showing no barcode. And we can't see the back of the cassette. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave that blank. But I can see the packaging here. It's a cassette case. So we'll set packaging to cassette case. And I'm also going to add an annotation. Limited to 50 lavender cassettes. We don't have a field for that in music brains, like a drop down or anything. So I'm just going to enter it in to the annotation. Perfect. And it's already added this link here. We might have extra links as well. We might have other databases uh, where you can order it from, so on. But I'll just have the Discogs link for now and then next. Now, this is another interesting situation because it has preloaded the track list here. So what we could do, and what we do first is press guess case, because Discogs has this annoying thing where they capitalize every word no matter what. And Music Brains uses title case instead. So if we click on guess case at the bottom right here, we can see lowercase a, lowercase the, as it should be. So what we could do is we could use what has been generated here and go to recordings. Now I know that these are the same songs as the other version. It's just a digital release and a cassette release. So we can go here and we can select each recording. So Peterburg Street. And what this is going to do is it's not going to create a new song, which is, which is great. What we can also do is release duplicates here. We can click here. And then next, and now it's going to uh, remove the seat, what's been seated, and it's going to reuse all the recordings from that digital media release automatically. So that could be a bit quicker, but what we will have to do is manually put in the format instead. I'm going to put in cassette, uh, and the numbers I'm going to have to do again as well, because instead of using the seated information, uh, we ended up using it. Uh, using the release duplicate from digital media. Okay, that's looking really good. Let's double check everything here. This looks great. And in the edit note, we've got where it was imported from. This has all been added automatically using the importer or the seeder. And the script that was used, used to import it. I can't really improve on that. That's really all that people need to know. I can click on enter edit. We can enjoy a little bit of elevator music. Wait for this to go through. And there we go. We've added the uh, the cassette release, Put the link here for where it came from, and it's sitting nicely next to the digital media release with a different release date.